just a minute, it should give me the link. But technically, well, it's always so weird. And there's got to be a million videos of me actually saying this to my guest is that we're live now, even though it's not appearing live. Okay, now <laughs> here we go. <laughs> yeah. And so, all right. So I'm going to send you the link. You can send that out. I want to welcome everybody who is uh, early to this. Uh, we're setting up this live right now. And let's see, I'm, I'm just going to send you the link in our uh, chat here on the, the Zoom. And then I will also link this on my Facebook. And then we'll get started here in just a second. So if you guys uh, are just tuning in, we're going to be doing some live Q&A. Uh, I've got Dr. Elena Saranova here, and we're going to be talking about longevity. Uh, we're going to be talking about our new course that we're very proud of. And uh, we'll be talking about um, basically some of the supplements that we, we've uh, been taking. And we're going to take some, some, some questions from the audience today. So live chats are open. The uh, super chats are there if you want to bump up your uh, question to the top. Uh, also, um, I'm, going to, I'm actually going to start with some of the questions that some of you guys have been sending me recently. Um, uh, and so I, I know so there's been some questions about some other supplements, some, some variations um, on uh, the, the, the way we look at supplementing with uh, NMN and other things that, um, that uh, are associated with longevity. So we're going to talk about that, uh, all kinds of good stuff. And I think I'm just about set up. So we'll get to it here in just a second. All right, there is that, there is that. The screen is here. I'm going to make sure the chats are open. And let's see. I'll say I'll say good morning here in the United States. Uh, that's the funny thing about working with people from around the globe <laughs> is that <laughs> I usually wake up and I check my emails immediately because um, you know by the time I wake up it's about midday for many of the people I work with over across the ocean. All right. So good morning, everybody. And uh, all right, so so hey, okay, so we are live, and hey, Carly A is there already. Good morning, thank you so much for being here. And uh, so we're, let's just go ahead and get started. So um, actually, it's it's interesting because I've been working now with you, Elena, now for I don't know. It's been it's been a few months. Time has flown uh, because yeah. it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I've been taking, and actually, I, for for. Uh, let's take a look at that. Take a look at that. Hey. I've been taking <laughs> this fine product uh, for quite some time. And it actually, it, it all started whenever I reached out to you guys, like, you know, I, I'm looking for a good um, product of NMN to take. I would, I had, um, I had seen the interviews with Dr. Uh, David Sinclair and Dr. Rhonda Patrick, and it, it got me interested in it. And of course, I've been doing sauna, cold therapy, you know, breath work and stuff for a long time. Um, and, and I, of course you, I mean, you went to school for this sort of thing. And so I was just, I just thought I'd start off and just talk a little bit about, um, the, the, the issue of like, when it comes to taking an NMN product, um, my biggest thing, I wanted to reach out to you because I knew that it was legit, that it was like, okay, I could see where it's all coming from. Um, how how difficult this is just not even really necessarily about your product but just about you how difficult was it to put all that together uh to find all these things i i mean i do you have to i don't even know how this would work but putting that together finding those sources was that how hard was that <laughs> yeah it actually took me a few months so i literally came up with the uh with the idea at some point and then um it actually took me um, less time to source to find the funding for the for the company to start than to actually put together the rest of the logistics. So it it, it just um, I actually was was quite lucky because I managed to 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 get some funding in um, you know quite soon from the conception of the idea. And then it literally took something like five, six months to, to launch the company. So it took five months to organize the logistics of finding a reliable manufacturer, and then the logistics of the packaging, the testing and everything. And everyone has a queue for, you know, for their services and oh, everything. Yeah. 
forever. And then there is a bank holiday and then there is a delay in this and that. <laughs> and then there is the Chinese bank holiday in November that right? I didn't know about. <laughs> Yeah, well, and, and you and I actually recently, I, I was uh, I was trying to say, oh, yeah, I've got the holidays. And, and in America, and for, for me, in the United States, at least, from late November to, to basically after January 2nd is pretty much a holiday. Because here in the United States, we have the, the uh, you know, Thanksgiving. And then, of course, every weekend, it seems like someone's throwing a Christmas party now. So, yeah, you got to... <laughs> There's a lot of things yeah, to kind I of had, get around. I had no idea. You told me that <laughs> it's Thanksgiving, Elena, and I'm not working today. The other day when I was like emailing you with my crazy requests or whatever. And I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't even realize. Well, so, yeah, you know. <laughs> I think we I think a lot of times we forget, you know, it, it, we're like, well, of course, you know, doesn't everyone have Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's just an American holiday. <laughs> I forgot about that. But yeah. So, well, okay. So it took you about six, you said five or six months to, yeah. to actually get it all out and, and going. And so, and then after that, I mean, uh, that, I mean, I, and it's, it's in my hand. It actually, it actually has <laughs> come to my location. Um, and so that's one of the supplements that I take. I start my day with Inamin and I take a gram a day next week. Actually, it was supposed to be this week, but next week um, I'm, I'm releasing my 100 days on NMN, and I had talked to you a little bit about uh, how I'd gotten my second wave of energy. <laughs> and I actually, I was like, okay, all right, I, I like this. And, um, and I was- Super excited I'm, about this review, by the way. Super oh, well, excited. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, I was, I was excited to do it because I thought, okay, I did a 30 day and um, I was like, oh, let's, let's just see, because it, it's been a good amount of time now. And it's just really into my routine. Um, and so now I'm starting on, I just started recently on uh, TMG. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So I would say hey, I'm less familiar with TMG than I am NMN. And I think there's fewer people that, you know, talk about it um, uh, in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Could you just explain what is TMG and yes, yeah, absolutely. all about that? Yeah, it's actually a very interesting supplement and it's been around for quite some time. So I'm personally surprised that, um, you know, it hasn't been advertised and marketed more because we now have so many human studies on, T on TMG. So TMG stands for trimethylglycine, which is basically a glycine molecule with three methyl groups attached to it. So yeah. Um, it's a very interesting molecule it, and it's very um, important for our methylation processes. So methylation is, uh, is one of the vital cellular processes that is involved in, in many, many functions in the cell. So it has to do with epigenetic regulation. It has to do with production of various substances in the cell. Um, such as melatonin, for example, or, or other things. And um, methylation is involved in so many things um, in the cell because um, by, by adding these methyl groups, there, there are different biochemical reactions going on. And for example, one a process that is very uh, essential for our cells to regulate is to balance the levels of homocysteine. So homocysteine right. is... Um, is another molecule that actually, if rising, um, it, uh, it correlates with higher risk of cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, and liver disease. And homocysteine is basically metabolized in our cells into um, two amino acids, into cysteine and methionine. And for this to happen, um, there needs to be a methyl group to be attached to the homocysteine. So uh, because of this, Homo, uh, if our levels of homocysteine are rising, uh, which they do as we age, um, we need to be consuming more and more methyl groups. However, we do have some methyl groups in our, in, in our bodies, but if we don't have enough, then we start having a problem. So for this reason, we need molecules that are basically the so-called methyl donors. And TMG okay. is one of these methyl donors. And it's actually very efficient because as I mentioned, um, it's one glycine molecule with three methyl groups attached to it. So yeah. um, it's, it, it, it could be a, um, a hailed as, a, as the optimal methylator basically within the cell. <laughs> yes. 
There are other um, methyl donors, such as, for example, vitamin B12 or a vitamin mm -hmm. B9 or B6 as well. But so far, um, TMG looks like it's a very, very beneficial molecule. It also has a very safe profile. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is also very nice to see. However, we need to kind of um, put a disclaimer here and actually say that um, it's, uh, it's a molecule that, um, that can affect the, uh, uh, the osmotic balance of the cells. And this means that it actually regulates how much water there is within the cell. So it has to do with the regulation of the balance of the water inside the cell and outside the cell. And um, this has to, uh, so now this might actually be involved in other processes as well, because um, any molecule that does have such a function of, um, of somehow affecting the osmotic balance and another molecule um, that does have such function is creatine, for example. So all of these okay. molecules taken at very high doses, they actually can have a laxative effect. <laughs> I can so actually attest to this, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it's, you know, I'm not saying, maybe I know a guy who's taken creatine for a while now. Okay. <laughs> It's yeah, just, you know, so, just a good, good humor in the morning. We, we just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. And, you know, I actually was quite surprised to see some, some clinical studies with, uh, with, uh, TMG at very high dosages because of this. So for <laughs> so example, you knew what we, they were going through, like all oh, those like, poor people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can get some, some sort of efficiency in terms of lo lowering the homocysteine levels yeah. at uh, yeah. quite low dosages already at, let's say 500 MG. And then, uh, you can probably have a very good um, response to at two grams, three grams, and even six grams of, of TMG per day. However, I've seen a clinical study that was studying the, um, um, the lipid profile in the liver and how TMG can, um, can actually positively affect this. And actually, there are a couple of studies out there looking at the lipid profile and, and lipid function um, in general and uh, in the liver with TMG. However, the studies are actually not that conclusive. But the funny part was that that in one of the studies, they actually used 20 grams per day. And I saw this and oh, I was wow. wondering, oh dear. <laughs> Let me see here, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the recommended dosage on our product is 500 mg. And obviously you can, you can take a bit more and it's not a problem. I personally take around two to three grams a day. And it, uh, it's actually tied up to the consumption of my NMN because the optimal yeah. ratio would be either one to two um, for NMN to TMG or one to three even um, if you kind of want to be on, on the, let's say, safe side because mm -hmm. the connection between TMG and NMN and why this is such a great combination is that NMN, so the first N in NMN stands for nicotinamide. And for this to be secreted through your urine, it actually also needs a methyl um, uh, group to be attached to it. So it needs to be methylated to be secreted. And for this reason, NMN is actually also consuming methyl groups. Um, so in order for it to be efficient, in order for it to, um, to, to, to have all of the methyl groups that it needs, um, it's an excellent combination to take it with TMG. And then you have this great effect where you're taking your NMN, you're feeling great, and then you're comp uh, complementing with um, the TMG supplementation. And then you have the, the best effect you can possibly have. And then you also lower your homocysteine levels as you go. It's, uh, it's strictly a preventative measure to take TMG when you're taking NMN. So it would take um, a healthy person quite some time to actually get, you know, like um, an unhealthy um, homocysteine levels or low, low, low methyl um, groups. However, it's good mm -hmm. to take it anyway, because it's actually a very, very good supplement. So as I said, there are already quite a lot of studies out there that um, that show the efficacy of, of TMG in humans. So we have nine studies that show that oh, wow. it's very efficient into lowering homocysteine levels. And then we have a few more um, looking into car the cardioprotective effect. Um, although again, there the science is a bit more complicated. So the interesting part about the studies is that um, when you're looking into the data, it's actually not clear whether high homocysteine is um, um, is basically a, a cause or a consequence of cardiovascular disease. So this is something that we still haven't 
um, understood very well. However, the correlation is definitely there. It's shown in multiple studies, and we know that with cardiovascular disease comes high homocysteine levels. So in any case, it's very good to keep your homocysteine in check and supplement with, with TMG. I think it's a wonderful supplement. And, you know, uh, as I said, there is no serious side effects if taken at proper dosages. Uh, very, very safe. Very nice. Well, I just just for this audience to know, I, I just found it out about the uh, laxative effect. Today is the day that I, I boosted my my dose, so I'll, I'll check oh, back. No. I'll check back with everyone <laughs> I'll check, if I if I suddenly need to, uh, to 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 end the call. Uh, you'll know why. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> so that's really cool. So okay, so I'm starting my morning. So this is how I, I generally am starting my morning. Um, and so and and. Good morning, everybody uh, that's that's checking in. Nice to see you all here. If you have any questions, uh, we're, we're going to be here for pretty much the next 45 minutes here on this call. So if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the uh, the box there. Uh, the uh, super chats are also available if you want to bump up your question to the top of the list. Uh, so in the mornings, basically, I will take my NMN. Now I'm taking my TMG. And then I, I want I was taking resveratrol pretty much regularly, and I was taking one gram of resveratrol per day. I, I read uh, Dr. Sinclair's book, and I was like, okay, but I think I'm doing that right, you know. Um, but then I've started I, just doing the olive oil, and I, <laughs> I actually really like it. And, and at first, <laughs> I didn't. At first, it was just kind of weird uh, to take a teaspoon or a tablespoon of uh, just oil, you know, and but. I went and I got the nice kind. I was like, okay, I'm going to get a really nice, you know, this is just for my morning routine. And so I've actually really enjoyed that. Um, and, uh, and it's, it's way less expensive. It's just olive oil. So it's, it's really yep. cost effective too. <laughs> now, occasionally I still will take resveratrol as well um, in the mornings. Just, just it, it is easier to travel that way. Um, rather than carrying around. Yeah. Yes, I also have a bottle, sir, of extra virgin <laughs> olive oil. You can't really fly with your extra virgin <laughs> olive oil bottle. You but, can't take uh, the, been... the head luggage. <laughs> right. right, they will look at you funny. You've got to drink it all right there. Uh, you know, it's... <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> You're talking about a bad flight. It's just going to be good. I don't know. I really don't want to even try to imagine what that's like. Um, well, you know, I, I, have you ever been in the airport where... You have maybe a water bottle. I, I always forget. So I'll yeah, bring, yeah. like what I'll do is I'll bring these types of things, right? And oh. <laughs> I'll just be, because I'm like, okay, I'll refill it on the on the way you yeah. know, at the airport. But then I'll, it'll be full and I'm just kind of waiting in line. I'm like, sir, you can't bring that. And so I'm like, okay, here we go. And I just really try to chug it because there's no place, that, they don't have like a sink to pour it out or anything like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've seen people like, they're, they're drinking their coffee really fast. Like, oh my God, let's try it. You know, I don't know. Um. <laughs> yeah. I, ha I had a very bad experience um, the other time as well. So what happened yeah. is that I was uh, late to get into the, um, the luggage check-in. So it was closed. So I had yeah. to go with my big luggage into the, uh, through the security, basically. So oh. in there, I had a bunch of my cosmetics and I don't know, my sunscreen lotions and whatever. Right, and they're like, no, you yeah. need to throw away everything. And I'm like, oh, oh no. God. Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God. it was terrible. It was horrible. And it wasn't even my fault because I was at the airport. It's just the line to this, uh, to the checking counter. It was so large. I was there like for over an hour and then it closed before I got there, basically. Oh my God. So, and they said, no, no, we just, uh, we had an announcement. You didn't hear the announcement. And I'm like, mm, I actually don't uh -huh. know. I was wearing my AirPods. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. But yeah, I had to throw away a bunch of bottles as well. It was very annoying. And I had yeah. to pay for the suitcase to be checked in for a second time oh, as course. well. Thank of you. course. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, and now here's the thing. So a lot of times I will really try to travel light. And whenever you take a lot of supplements, it's kind of weird. I don't know if anybody that's, that's watching can, uh, can attest to this. And I'm, I'm sure you've had this happen where I, I try to travel where it's just a carry on. It's like, okay, I'm only going to be there for a weekend or I'm just going for a, a day or two and I'll take all of these supplements. I don't, you've got the, you've got those cases though. So, so just for, for everybody watching and for those of you listening, we had recently nerded out and we were, we may do that here in just a minute. We nerded out about our daily routines uh, as far as our supplement routines. And she's got all, everything's all neat. 
And it's like, okay, I take this. No, for me, I've got a, just a, like a bag and it's all of the bottles, you know, just all the <laughs> bottles are thrown in there. I'm like, okay, let's see here. And every, when I'm walking around, it, it sounds like this, you know, <laughs> I, I need to, I, I've tried it the other way and it's just like, no, I always forget something. So, but yeah, so anyway, actually speaking of supplements, there were some questions from the audience um, and I've, I've gotten some people reaching out on some supplements, it's like, why don't you take it this way? What about, what do you, would, what would you say about this particular thing? So let's, let's take a look at those questions. Um, sure. And then of course, guys, if you have any questions in the audience, if you want to uh, chime in, uh, we're more than happy to take those. So one of the questions that I recently got uh, was with regards to, hang on just a second, let me just click this. Uh, it is with regards to uh, taking in a, uh, in a D, um, so, but in this case, it was NADH. Uh, have you heard of this? And what, what, what would you say is the yeah, sure. <laughs> answer to this kind of a question? I'm sure you've heard this question before. Yeah. So NADH is basically a reduced form of NAD+. So we do have the oxidized form, which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide plus, and then we have the reduced form, which is NADH. And NAD plus is actually the one that does convert into NADH. So that's mm -hmm. the, the sequence of event that we have in the cell. And then uh, in order to boost your NAD plus, you need to take either the NAD itself, but it has very low availability. So we're not doing that. Or you need to take an NAD precursor. And this is where supplements like NMN come in because you want something to boost the NAD plus and then um, the... Um, uh, the um, the result would be to have both uh, more NAD plus produced and NADH, which are both uh, beneficial for the cell, by the way, and we need both. But um, this is the sequence of event, and uh, you're not going to necessarily boost your NAD plus if you're taking NADH anyway. Although I need to say that uh, NADH also has lower bioavailability. So it's also not being absorbed very well by the cell. So, um, you know, I, I, I've been looking into, you know, the, the different kinds of supplements that have been released over the years and supplementing with NAD or NADH is kind of like the, the, the previous generation supplementation Old before we stuff. get to the NAD precursors, basically. Mm -hmm. So this is why, you know, uh, supplementing with a precursor such as NMN, uh, would be the most efficient way to boost your NAD levels. And there are different ways to take it. There are different formulations. There is, um, you, you can even do an NAD plus intravenous injection as well, right? I've heard of so this. Yeah. I, I've heard of this before. I haven't tried it. I'm actually, I do want to try it because I want to compare the effect with, with oral NMN supplementation. So one way or another, um, you know, it's, it's much more expensive. I think that it's actually like much more pricey in the US. Uh, mm -hmm. In Europe, you can find it for cheaper or in the Middle East. So this is quite intriguing. Uh, but yeah, definitely a different way to supplement for your and, and boost your NAD plus because this is uh, the master regulator of human metabolism, right? And no matter what, if you're over 30, like you will start having this deficiency of NAD plus going on and over 40, it will be already, you know, like it, it will be very reduced. There is no doubt about it. Maybe it will be, uh, you know, in, in, in a different range, maybe um, and it would be a different value for everyone because it has to do also with uh, your lifestyle, whether you're active, whether you're going to the gym, you have nice nutrition, you're respecting your circadian rhythms, for example, because if you're not, then you have a, a higher NAD plus expenditure because your body is not feeling well. And, you know, this is what we're talking about in the longevity course as well. We're talking yeah. about respecting your body and about optimizing everything you can in order to have the optimal routine on a daily basis and, and make sure that your body doesn't have unnecessarily um, uh, expenditure in terms of NAD and energy. Yeah, actually, speaking of the course, let's actually just, br just to bring that up just for a minute, I do want to show, because I got to show it off. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. I got to say, now putting together a, an online course is something um, that, I mean, it's challenging. And you and I, we worked, I mean, we were working, uh, in, you know, in tandem across the, the globe and we, we managed <laughs> to pull it off. 
So I'm just going to share my screen just for a minute. I just want to kind of give everybody an idea of what this looks like. This is just a sneak peek for those of you guys who haven't seen it. Uh, it's called the Foundations of Longevity and Life Extension. And when you when you get into this, the cool thing about this course is the I would say the quality um, of of the of, well, obviously the quality of, of your lectures. I mean, look at us. I mean, right. I mean, yeah, come on, we're just awesome. But but also the, the thing is the quality, the, the source of the information, because whenever you go online, there's a lot of there's a lot of voices out there. Um, and so what we've really done here is we said, OK, what are the things that are sort of higher level? So, for instance, um, with uh, Dr. Sarah Nova's lectures, they're really they're the kind of lectures that um for instance, I, I would love to uh, to actually be able to take it in person, but the nice thing is this is on <laughs> demand. Um, and like, just for instance, you know, what is autophagy? Why is it important? Um, you know, this, you, you get a complete, I'm just, let's see here, I'm not gonna do the audio here, um, but this is a complete lecture, right? From an, an authority figure in the this field. Um, and we're talking multiple, multiple, multiple lectures. Um, so you get a lot, you got a lot of, a lot of stuff for your brain. Um, we also have, of course, let's see here. Let me get to some of the stuff that I was doing on my, my part. But if you take a look on the left here, I'm just kind of scrolling through. Um, this is, this is all the different bits of content. Um, of course, honestly, I think that, you know, the, um, all of the content that we organize is, is just priceless because it's, it's everything you need to know about longevity from A to Z and mm -hmm. things that you and I will learn those things over the years by researching <laughs> and by collecting so much information. And now we put it all together in a course. Like I couldn't be more excited about a product. You know, I think that it will be so beneficial for someone that wants to understand what is um, important for um, for someone that wants to take his health seriously and wants to slow down the aging process and make sure that you know they um, they take advantage of of things that we can do today on a daily basis in order to um, basically intervene with this aging process and make sure that. Um, you know, we get as much longevity as possible. We extend the health span and health span is a term that refers to the amount of years that we spend in good health because we have the lifespan, which is the overall life um, of an organism or, or a human. And then we have the health span and we obviously ah. want to increase both. And health span is very important because no one wants to live many years in, in poor health. Everyone wants to be healthy, obviously, and live many years. So this is what we've done. And yes, uh, my, my PhD was actually in autophagy and I was studying the role of autophagy in neurodegeneration. This is where my research kind of led me into the field of the NAD biology as well. And we cover all of the subjects in the, uh, uh, in the course. We're talking about um, what is aging, the hallmarks of aging, and then about autophagy, about NAD biology. And then um, as you, you see here, we're going into the other really, really cool stuff, which is the interventions that have to do with um, respecting your circadian rhythms and then uh, a bunch of other stuff that um, that can also be very beneficial for both men and women. So for example, there is a lecture that I have that is called uh, skincare for men and women, because usually when men um, uh, hear skincare, they think that it doesn't apply to them for some reason. <laughs> and then, you know, like you have, like, it's, it's really funny, you know, so um, my aunt and her husband, her husband is eight years older, but then when you see them side by side, it looks like he's, I don't know, maybe 15 years older because she's like uh you know she does all of her skincare and everything he just doesn't care and it doesn't need to be this way because if you want to feel young and and look young of course it's very very important to take care of your skin as well so oh, yeah. uh and and that's just an example because we're talking about uh, many more things such as intermittent fasting the optimal um, nutrition for longevity. I particularly am talking about what works for me, um, which is where I'm leaning towards more of the ketogenic slash 
carnivore diet and I explain in the course why I, I, I probably give all of the science as well as to why I think it's beneficial, why intermittent fasting is so important. And then we both are talking about hormesis, which is also super important to preserve yourself in good health. And, and of course, your wonderful lectures about the breath work and, and all of the other cool stuff, really nice stuff. I really, the thing was, and I'll just come clean, it was a way for me to trick you into making a course so that I could learn all of the things that you would teach. <laughs> it, I said, oh, oh aha. It's, <laughs> no, it was, that it was, was a really, single pun. <laughs> yeah, I was like, mm, how can I get her to record all the things that she would teach? Ah, yes, I know. But no, it's, it's actually, it's been great because of that reason. I've really learned a lot just myself watching the videos. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, with skincare, my wife, uh, she, she was like, well, I remember when we first got married, she's like, that's, that's like not brushing your teeth or something. If you, if you don't take care of that, I'm like, ah, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's fine. I, I grew up and I didn't wear sunscreen and, and I, I have a weird allergy to uh, cocoa butter. And I guess cocoa butter was in every kind of sunscreen I'd ever try when I was a kid. And so yeah. I just never wore SPF. And she's like, okay, we've got a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, guys, check out afterwards, after this is, uh, this is done, uh, I'll be having the links uh, to the course. And of course, um, if you go to my, my uh, homepage, and of course you go to in and bio, uh, dot, uh, I think it's uk.co, right? Dot co dot uk. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. <laughs> it's the, okay, so dot, dot co dot uk. Yes, that's correct. And I'm in bio.co.uk. Yes, you can get it. The cool thing is you can get a combination, which is really cool. I, I think my parents did this over uh, Black Friday with, with your event because uh, they, they were like, okay, all right, let's get it all. And, and so you can get all this stuff all together. Uh, cool with discount and all that stuff. As yeah, well. yeah. We, we still have, uh, we now have a Christmas sale starting today, actually, oh, very nice. where you can actually get um, some bundles of NMN and get some T mg for free as well so okay. uh, for everyone that's listening uh go check out the website and i believe that jesse will have a discount code as yes. well in the description that's uh, right for take a, a look at the description mm -hmm. get save some cash so um <laughs> so anyway let's let's talk a little bit about let's see the, uh, going back to some supplement questions uh so we talked yeah. a little bit about nadh um, I've also had people ask about NAC. So I don't know if, 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 if those of you guys who are watching know about NAC. So NAC is n acetylcysteine, uh, mm -hmm. which is, it's, it's a, it's a form of the L-cysteine, uh, mm -hmm. amino acid. Um, and they, they were asking, you know, why wouldn't you take NAC? Uh, it's, it, it's much cheaper. Uh, you know, it's far more available. Why wouldn't you take that versus NMN? Um, yeah, so thoughts. this is the, this is a completely different supplement, and this is interesting that this question came up because someone else asked me this before as well. Uh, so there is, uh, as far as I am concerned, there is absolutely no connection here. So NAC is basically a precursor to gl glutathione. Uh, which is a completely different pathway. And glutathione is a strong antioxidant, which makes NAC actually a very strong antioxidant. And it's, um, it's a very interesting supplement. And I'm actually taking this myself, although not to boost NAD levels, but for the antioxidant properties. Um, so the interesting part about it is that when um, th there is a really nice paper out uh, looking at basically different compounds that are already uh, on the market, either natural compounds or, or chemical compounds that, um, and then they're doing a meta-analysis of data to see which compounds have managed to prolong lifespan in different animal models. And so it, it's a very surprising um, paper. I don't know if you've, uh, if you've read it or not, but basically the number one compound that prolonged the lifespan in, in different model organisms the most was aspirin. So oh, wow. this was super, super um, surprising. And then the second best was NAC. So uh, this is oh, very, interesting. very interesting. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because um, there, you see, I think that we actually haven't 
um, haven't actually figured out the, the antioxidant science that much yet, because 20 years ago or 30 years ago, there were many studies saying that um, the theory of aging that is the most um, true and the most, um, the one that everyone figured out was the theory that because of, of rising levels of reactive oxygen species in the body, the body is getting old. But actually, we have disproven this now. So uh, antioxidants are actually not that beneficial. And there are people out there just taking tons of vitamin E and, and, and whatnot. And, you know, they're taking because they think that it's going to prolong their, their health span or lifespan. And it's not working this way. But there are other compounds that do have antioxidant um, action. And, uh, but then, and at the same time, they might be having some sort of other um, actions within the cell. And for this reason, they're actually efficient. So mm -hmm. with NAC in particular, it does boost the levels of your glutathione. Uh, it acts as a precursor. It is very efficient at boosting glutathione that than taking glutathione itself. Actually, I think that it's, it's super, super cool. And yeah. it looks like it's, it's, it's working very well uh, towards extending lifespan in, in different model organisms. So this is interesting. Um, there are some data in different fly models as well with different mutations with um, a SOD1 mutation. I saw a study um, which have a superoxide dismutase, which also has to do with, with basically uh, reactive oxygen species in the cell and a couple of other fly models. And the data are not super consistent across okay. all of the studies. However, I think it's, it's a very interesting compound and it's worth taking. So I'm also taking NAC, um, not in the morning with my, so my um, morning cocktail also contains of yeah. adamant and then the olive oil. And then after my uh, breakfast, I will probably take the TMG as well. And then the NAC, I will take later in the afternoon. So um, different compound. I don't know if just people get confused because it does sound like NAD or something like that. So they think that maybe it's also a precursor. Uh, niacin is another precursor to right. NAD. So, yeah. but niacin actually um, takes a few steps in order to convert into NAD. And this is why NMN is most beneficial because um, NMN is a direct precursor, meaning that it converts into NAD in one step. Mm -hmm. So I do have a question from the audience. As Carly A says, I haven't listened to much about the NMN and NAD plus, et cetera. She says, I'm almost uh, 63. So it sounds like I should use them. Uh, something that concerns me about, about supplements is what the capsules are made of, um, like maltodextrin. Okay, so in a maltodextrin, that's a, that is a laxative. Um, let's see, and then the Nomad Traveler. Hey, Nomad Traveler, nice to have you here today. Uh, he says, Carly, additional effort. If you can determine that you will benefit from them, remove the powder and take it direct. Uh, okay, so I guess, you know, just, just on this topic, um, when it comes to uh, the capsules, the NAD, the, the NMN capsules, uh, mm -hmm. is it just regular? Uh, yeah. so, so the capsules uh, that we use, they don't contain any maltodextrin or other um, you know, synthetic compounds. So it's all vegetable cellulose, which is basically natural and it's vegan friendly as well. So there is no concerns there. And as to um, you know, taking the NMN out of the capsule, I think that this is basically not necessary. And this is what, and you know, I, I do this myself as well. I just take the capsule because uh, all of the studies that we have uh, seen so far with NMN, where the efficacy of the compound has been uh, shown in humans, they were all taking a capsule, right? So oh, no one was yeah. breaking it down, no one was taking the powder, same in you know, rats or mice, they're just putting the, the animal into their water, they're drinking water or something. And they're not because I'm, I'm hearing things like, oh, but the sublingual powder is better. Or, oh, right. the, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know, the, the nasal spray is better or whatever. We actually don't have any data that show that this is a better form. There is like absolutely zero data on this. All of the um, studies that we have seen so far is with oral supplementation. And, um, you know, when we are looking into the NMN transporter as well, because there is, we do have an NMN transported in the cell where we take it and then it's being, um, it's entering the cell through the transporter. And this transporter is actually um, highly expressed in our gut. 
So oh, this okay. is the reason why, you know, like there is no need for all of this, I don't know, nasal sprays and, and, and whatnot. And, you know, I had a manufacturer contacting me saying, oh, you should uh, put your NMN into transdermal patches. And uh, actually, <laughs> if you have a look at the expression of the transporter in different tissues, there is no expression in the skin. So why would you put it in a, oh, in wow. a transdermal patch? much this you know and i don't know if people have already done it but i know that there are a lot of different forms it's just my take-home message from this is that you know you should always evaluate whether uh whatever a manufacturer or company is saying is actually backed by science or not that's a great point i know that there are a lot of supplements that are um you know there's some some research that shows okay taking it subdermally or, or sub sublingually like for instance the b12 uh we were just talking about that before uh, you know it's just is generally better uh, taken that way um you know there are certain tinctures that you might feel it faster and uh but it is important to actually get the the real research on the actual product and actually how how is this actually absorbed into our our system yeah. so that's that's interesting um mm -hmm. and and yeah. Yeah. Sorry. One more point about the niacin. So um, niacin yes, is yes. high dosages. It actually gives you hot flushes. So oh, yeah. I, I've, I've noticed that. <laughs> I have taken um, a supplement before that contained niacin and I had this experience and actually I didn't know what it is. This was many years ago. Uh, so I didn't know it was from, from the niacin that I had the hot flushes. Oh, and no. the is that there is another form that, um, that has been on the market that does not um, cause the flush, but actually this might not be very good for your liver because it's being metabolized in a different way and it may actually damage the liver with long-term consumption. So niacin as a supplement, I wouldn't recommend it in any um, case, you know? So uh, you do want to make sure that you are boosting your NAD levels somehow. And there are a lot of ways to do this, um, as we said, and one of them is supplementation, but the supplementation needs to be efficient and obviously have a good safety profile as well. Yeah, I, I've experienced the same thing with uh, the flushing effect is what, you know, they call it the flush or whatever. And your my face got all red and, yeah, yeah, I, you exactly. know, and just I started tangling everywhere and itching and, <laughs> I yeah, like, man, why do people do this? And of course, after a while, you get used to it. But it's like, why would I want to keep yeah. doing this so much that I have to get used to it? And um, I know my dad, he, he's taken that. And of course, nice. And there's a lot of benefits for your heart and things of that nature. But uh, yeah, man, um, of course, you, you get nice and you get all your B vitamins if you have a, a, a well-rounded diet um, and, uh, and eat plenty of those green leafy vegetables. Um, one one really nice supplement that I uh, recently started taking as well is beef liver. So yeah, it's okay, tell me about this one. I, I need to know more about yeah. beef liver. Yeah. I think it's actually wonderful. It uh, it gives you a lot of energy, and this was surprising for me to uh, to experience because I already have a lot of energy from the element. <laughs> so right? you know, this was, this came as a surprise because I just. Um, I just thought to try it out because I saw it somewhere. I, I, I read some, something. Is it the real I muscular thought, guy? The dude with the beard and he's got like uh, insane, like <laughs> every muscle is enormous. I, I guess no, it wasn't I, this guy. No, no. I, it I just assumed uh, you're, you're like, yeah, I want to look like that guy. Uh, <laughs> you know. But there's this guy out there. He, he has these beef liver supplements. The, 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 the audience, you guys might, know, you might recognize who I'm talking about. I don't remember his name, but like, he is jacked and he, he just, he talks about how he eats beef liver all the time. So anyway, okay. Different guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I've not taken yeah. it yet. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I don't like the taste of beef liver personally, so I, I don't that. like eating it, but, <clears throat> and because I don't, and I know that it's actually very beneficial. I thought to, to try this particular supplements. Um, and basically I tried them out and it's a really nice company that I found for this and they, they have their own manufacturing facility and they have other supplements with other like organs and stuff like that. I, I actually think that it, it, it's really interesting. Um, so anyway, I tried it out and, um, beef liver is basically loaded with, you know, B12 and other mm -hmm. B vitamins and a bunch of other stuff. And I realized that it gives me even more energy. Um, and I, I haven't experienced this for a while, you know, because I've been taking NMN for, right. for over a year for like probably 18 months or something like this, 
or maybe even uh, two years now. Oh yeah. my God, wow. I, I was. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I recently chewed the uh, the bit liver supplements, and I felt even more energy. And then I gave the supplement to my mom as well, and yeah. she also felt the effect. And she she was like asking me to to get her some of the supplements too, which usually doesn't oh, nice. happen. I just started the NMN and my own. Yeah, normally, you just like take this, yeah. mom. You take it. <laughs> I love you. Take it. I do that. Yeah. With my, that's how I do it with my family. I'm like, okay, this is what you're taking now. My dad's mm-hmm. a lot like me. He's been. He's, 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 he's gotten, he's the one who got me into nutrition and stuff like that. But my mom, I'm like, okay. take this mom, take it. <laughs> yeah. So your mom's taking it, you're taking it. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, and the thing is, <laughs> and Tristan made a comment. You know who I'm talking about, Tristan. You don't think he's natty or natural. Uh, I think he's on the roids too, Tristan. I think you're right. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, the, the organ meat that, and, and you mentioned carnivore and, and uh, keto. That's one of those things where oftentimes uh, whenever, um, like for instance, uh, people go on the carnivore diet, a lot of times organ meats are, are recommended, you know, because that's where a lot yeah. of those micronutrients are hiding. Yeah. A lot of those just, it's just yeah. packed fully dense with all those nutrients that sometimes you miss out on um, when, when you're not uh, eating quite so many, much variety. Uh, yeah, but I absolutely. really like the taste, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the taste either. And actually, I have a point here. So you mentioned that, you know, there are some foods that are recommended and things like that. And Mm -hmm. on one hand, um, this is my usual diet. But on the other hand, I actually want to raise the point that it's very important to kind of maintain a metabolic flexibility. So if you cut out carbs completely from your life, right? And after a year, you want to eat something that contains carbs, it actually will be very hard for you to digest. So um, I think that no uh, particular diet should be uh, um, should be viewed as a dogma. Okay, because Mm -hmm. oh, my um, God, yes, just the guy. Preach it. it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because there are people that start experiencing, for example, the keto flu when they're going hardcore on keto Mm -hmm. and you can't do this. You kind of need to ease yourself into it. And then the same with any kind of diet, really. And with diets that are, let's say, the the carnivore diet, it's actually very, very hard to do if you're, um, you know, living by it every day. Super hard to do. It's it. it, And sometimes it's not possible. And for some people, it, it could be super, super beneficial. But for the majority of people that actually don't have particular health issues, um, it could be quite challenging. And uh, maintaining some sort of metabolic um, flexibility is actually not that bad. So, you know, every once in a while, you can you can have um, days that are not low carb, let's say, and, you know, have a cheat meal or whatever. I don't like the phrase cheat meal because... I don't either. Yes. Uh, yeah, it just gives me the impression of like McDonald's or something. And like, I, I'm not doing that on my on my cheat days. Okay, like I might have some, I don't know, some really nice ice cream or some really nice dessert every now and then. And this is another a point that we're touching on the course, by the way, we're talking about the, yeah. uh, the female cycle and how uh, yes. women are more metabolically flexible during their cycle as well, because their insulin sensitivity is different throughout the month. So this is also very important to be aware of because it was so funny. So I wanted to do like a a 30 day strict, no dessert diet at some point, because um, (laughs) I was traveling during summer. So I had a lot of desserts at some point, which is not, you know, like what I usually do. And I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to do like a 30 day um, dessert detox or whatever. I won't have any dessert at all. And then, and then my first day of my period came and then I just lost it. Oh my God. Like it was so funny because literally two days ago, we were at a restaurant with, with some friends and I was like, no, no, I'm not going to have the dessert. I'm doing my detox. And then two days later, oh my God, you know, like I couldn't the help hormones that. made their demands. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, because- I, I hear you. Well, I think, I think oftentimes people are very dogmatic about diet. And this is something that I, I'm, I'm really passionate about because, because you'll get so many like almost militant camps about, yeah. no, this is the right way. And, you know, and um, a lot of times, uh, you know, especially around the holidays, my, my family members are like, the, the, well, I started, you know, keto or this or that. 
and they act as though it's the only way to go and everything else is, is, is a bad idea. And, and there's so much variability in our species too. I think, you know, for some people um, like, and actually there, you can have your genetics tested uh, to see if there are certain diets that are, are not going to be good for you. I always notice that whenever I tried to do keto, I just felt terrible. I, no matter how much I eased into it, I just, it just did yeah. not work for me. And then later on, I, uh, I did get my genes. Uh, I did the, the, the test and it took a look and, okay. and it was something that it would, it was like, no, this one, this one is not actually, uh, it, it could be possibly harmful. And I don't remember exactly what genes I had that, that right. let them know okay, that, but that's interesting. yeah. And so, uh, now I am the type of person that I do try to, I, I do notice that, um, when I do more plant-based, uh, I do generally feel pretty good. So, so the plant-based things, but I love eating meat. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't completely stop that. Um, and so I've, I, you know, there's so many of the diets out there and, and I think staying in keto is fantastic if you can do it. But it's going to be eventually, eventually you're, you're not going to be in all those perfect circumstances to keep yourself yeah. in, in that perfect keto. Um, yeah, that's the thing is we, we live within a society and we have friends and family and, you know, we have social occasions where maybe some choices are not available. And then, of course, as you said, this is actually very true. And, you know, I've tried being vegan myself. Uh, actually for quite some time, for three years, uh, back in 2012. And it was like, at first, actually, when you cut out the processed meat, you actually feel pretty good because you're detoxing, Mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, there, there might be some um, some other foods you stop consuming and this makes you feel good. So for example, some inflammatory um, uh, foods and things like that. So this will make you feel good. But for me personally, I found that uh, in the long term, it was not sustainable anymore because I started feeling weak and I yeah. started feeling like, you know what, I can't do it. And this actually correlated with me moving from sunny Greece to the UK as well. And That's so the thing too. climate came and I'm like, oh my God, you know, what? I can't be vegan here. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, like I'm not going to do that. well there's there's so much of um you know i i I think there's a lot of uh, people get really into like i I was saying earlier it's like a a, a, almost a militant dogma is like this is the only way um and a lot of it has to do with you know the quality of your food so okay cut out processed foods um there's a lot of research that shows that when you get organic vegetables of course, they've been stressed. I mean, they, they've had to, there's those stressed vegetables, they've got those phytosterols in them. Um, and that's going to help you a lot more than, you know, and so, so a lot of it has to do with the quality of food. Um, actually, I'm doing, I got to show you this. I, I didn't tell you about this before, but look at this. Just look at this. See that? Oh, <laughs> I'm doing one of those glucose monitors right now. Nice, so I, nice. I'm beta yeah, I want to try one as well. I'm very curious. Okay, so, so the, the answers, okay, so the quick answers. It does not hurt. So like that, I thought, and like my wife, she's like, she's like, uh, man, I feel like you constantly are going to have some like gaping wound or something like it. There's, there's really nothing like that on here. Okay. Um, but it, it, it is one of those things where um, you not only notice the differences in um, your, your glucose levels whenever, you know, for certain foods, but also whenever you're under stress, a little bit more stress, a little bit less stress, you can see it. So Anyway, so I'm especially interested with the um, uh, with when we talk about the M, the mTOR because that was the big thing that that was like, oh man, I can't eat the meat. I guess I can't eat meat anymore. Oh no, what am I going to do? And so I'm especially interested in okay, can I get that blood glucose to come down after dinner so that I've got mm-hmm. those good hours? Um, and uh, so, so yeah. I'm, I'm, it will be very interesting to see. I hope you're um, you know you're writing everything down. Oh, yeah. and- you're monitoring everything it would be really interesting to actually talk about this when you have some findings after some time so oh. yeah definitely another uh you know subject for for a youtube video <laughs> oh yeah i'm gonna have plenty of videos everybody everybody that's watching prepare to be inundated with like guess what happened today you know that that's <laughs> <laughs> that's coming let's see i think we have a few more questions and then we're going to uh close out this live i want to thank everybody for being here definitely check out the um the longevity course the foundations of, of longevity or longevity and lifespan extension um we are uh really really proud of that product and so um that just came out um and i, I would say we're kind of in a soft release right now um and uh those the people that have already started on it i've, I've heard some good comments already so 
definitely check that out. Let's see here what we have, uh, just a few comments. Uh, the Nomad Traveler, he says that, uh, oh yeah, five hour energy shots. He says the first ingredient is nice and really interesting. I did not know that. Um, yeah, the five hour energies, that's, that's some rough stuff. Um, uh, Tristan is concerned about saturated fat and cholesterol from organ meats. Um, I, actually, generally organ meats are relatively low in fat, uh, just in general. Um, and some saturated fat, you got to remember, again, it always comes down to there's never a necessarily something that's always good and something oh, that's all bad. So, you know, some saturated fats are actually beneficial. Uh, and, and obviously, we don't want to just, just have our whole diet out of just nothing but saturated fats, but uh, especially good for a hormone production. Um, and but if you're worried about saturated fats, the, the, the organ means generally are very low in saturated fat and in just fat in general. Uh, any thoughts on on that to add uh, or just... yeah i mean i think you pretty much covered it um yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here um now carly what used to be a militant keto person okay all right so now you can be friend just be friendly with people if you see <laughs> when you see people eating carbohydrates they're not the devil uh i am now doing aip and i'm no longer acting like the food police oh i love that yeah don't be the food police <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, and then Dave is talking about the blue zones. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, says the longest the living areas in the world of blue, blue zones, even eating almost exclusively plants. Yeah. And one of the things you'll see in, in those blue zones, especially when, when, with regards to the Mediterranean diet. Um, and of course mm -hmm. you, you grew up in Greece. So, so the, va there's a, the vast majority of people are, uh, they, they'll, they'll go, there's a lot of fasting in, in general uh, with, uh, for instance, the like Greek Orthodox church. And, and so you'll see a lot of fast religious fasting there. Um, yeah. Lots of olive oil too, right? Yeah, it's it's very interesting that you touch on this. So there is indeed religious fa fasting for, for the Christian Orthodox church. So my grandma, she used to actually fast um, and be vegan slash vegetarian for, um, for two days a week. And so it was basically a detox and a natural way to, to kind of activate your AMPK and, you know, shut down mTOR and activate autophagy. So this is very interesting. Um, in addition to this, there are actually a couple of islands in Greece, um, Crete and Ikaria in particular, um, where they do have a lot of people living um, over 100. And their diet is Mediterranean. Uh, in Ikaria specifically, it's uh, mostly uh, um, vegetarian, vegetarian slash vegan. Um, now, what happens with the blue zones and with the vegetarian diets there is that, and, and why there is such a big uh, difference between this and, and you know, some, some Western countries. Um, it's not necessarily about the meat. I think that it has to do with the quality of food overall, because uh, when you are introducing all of this processed foods and all of this, and even the, the, the high carb stuff like that, everything is processed. You, you're going to the supermarkets and you're seeing all of these aisles of you know a bunch of carbs and biscuits and and it's yeah. endless like there is so much variety to entertain you and you know <laughs> keep you in a diet. and so it, it doesn't even have to do with the meat it has to do with the fact that the western diet unfortunately is very very bad for you because yeah. of all of the processed foods that are being introduced and you know there is a, a documentary on this i actually don't remember the name but it's talking about um you know the um i'm getting a bit political here but basically you know the sugar industry has funded some studies like back in the days like 50 60 70 years ago in the u.s with you know harvard um and and other very big universities to publish data um against uh fatty foods in order to oh, kind yeah. of um, you know, re redo this this food pyramid with carbs being on, on the bottom with 55, 60% of allocation of your calories coming from carbs. And mm -hmm. this whole thing, like it made the population sick. It made the population even more sick because now, you know, one in, in, in two or whatever um, adults is, is pre-diabetic. And we're having this epidemic of, of obesity and, you know, no one's talking about it. Like we're, we're Oh, we're yeah. talking about the pandemic of the virus yeah. and whatever, but like the true pandemic is the sugar pandemic because it's literally, it's addictive. And, mm -hmm. you know, 
casein and gluten that so casein is um in milk and and gluten is in 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 wheat and in other um um basically bread products and things like that pasta all of these things they these two substances they're actually uh getting converted into something uh that is called caseomorphin and gluteomorphin yeah so yeah. those things are acting on the same pathway as opioids do so it's literally super super addictive it's like a drug and it keeps you craving all of these carbs and it's really um it's actually very very hard to get out of this addiction it's super addictive try try and do it yourself right like yeah. everyone oh, everyone yeah. that i know is eating a dessert every day right <laughs> and, you know, like i'm uh some some days of my cycle i'm i'm doing this hey. as well yeah. but you know like i'm obviously trying to avoid this and minimize this as much as possible um most of the days i'm on, on low carb um diet which is either keto or carnivore with, with some ex uh, with some exceptions but yeah basically the western diet is so bad for you that if you compare to more um pure societies with not that many processed foods the the, the data is staggering and you know, there are many reasons behind this. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, and the thing is, we've had we've had uh, fast food, we've had processed foods now for so long. Uh, like, for instance, I mean, um, you know, I, I, I'm I'm turning I'm turning an old age. I'm going to be turning 41. <laughs> so I'm going to be turning 41 in about a week or so. So um, actually, I've, I've, I've recently had a person send me a very fine beer that I'm going to cheers on 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 air with the audience on my birthday so i'm looking forward to that i want to thank you uh okay. papa geek out there but <laughs> but that's one of those things where as far as i remember in the united states we've had mcdonald's hardy's uh you know taco bell we've had uh, kentucky fried chicken all these you know it's been just such a part of the regular life that it's been normalized and and it's, i think it's very difficult for a person who's grown up in that where it's nothing but Coca-Cola and, um, you know, everything has sugar added to it. Our bread here in yeah. the United States is, um, it couldn't even, in some places in the UK, from what I've heard, it's not even considered bread. It's, it's considered like a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and, and yeah, I, and I don't sure. doubt it. And, and so whenever you, you look at our sodium intake, when you look at our sugar intake, um, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, and, and, and the real epidemic that you see in the West is uh, type two diabetes. We've got yeah. um, just staggering numbers with with type two diabetes, and that's something that is is a lifestyle. Um, generally, in most cases, it is caused by lifestyle choices. And the problem is, a person who is who's born into that, right? And my son, oh my god, my son comes home with so much candy and with all this stuff from from school and everything else. And I'm like, I am. I'm just glad he doesn't always remember where he puts it because I throw so much away. I'm okay. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm the bad, but I, I, I can't, I'm like, I've got it. I've got it. Like, there's no way I'm going to let him eat all of this. Like Halloween yeah. here in the United States, man, we go oh, around, gosh. we get all this candy. I'm like, this is just a bunch of poison that I got for my son here. Uh, and so we'll give him a few pieces, you know, and, um, but, uh, but fortunately he forgets, he forgets where he puts, uh, uh a lot of the, the candy. I'm like, okay. Oh, see nobody so I, I throw it away um and getting off of sugar was difficult for me uh but uh but yeah now whenever I eat something that's it's processed it'll taste really good like this part in when it's in my mouth man it's great but after that it's nothing but punishment yeah. so anyway guys I just want to thank everybody for being here we've been uh, going for about an hour this is something maybe in the future we can look forward to as well we didn't get a chance to uh compare our supplements maybe that'll be something we do on our next uh episode next time. because um I, I really am interested in learning more about uh what you're taking and of course I, I I've never really revealed my my daily supplements uh in <laughs> uh, in, in an episode on on uh, this channel so I'm, I'm be excited to kind of share that as well um, there's the, on YouTube, there is a, a, uh, a genre called mukbang where people just sit there and they eat, talk about a you know, terrible thing to do for your body. They just sit there and they eat like a whole bunch. And I, sometimes whenever I'm taking my morning, uh, my morning supplements, <laughs> I'm like, man, maybe I, maybe I'm doing, <laughs> maybe I'm doing a mukbang of supplements. <laughs> anyway, guys, I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, again, check out in the description box below after we get done with this, there will be a link for our course. 
Um, and uh, again, this is this is something we're very very proud of. It's it's very good work, and uh, we've we've gotten a lot of good reviews uh, from those of you guys who've already that were the um, pre uh, sale pre sale some of my pre sale orders. Um, it's uh, there's uh, there's a link down below. Also, you'll you'll make sure to take a look at the link for NM and Bio. Uh, check out these awesome products here. And uh, if you're in the airport, like me, with in your backpack, it's just that's what I sound like whenever I'm walking down with my backpack. Anyway, Honestly, I'm, I'm like I'm trying to see at what point they're gonna stop me with my suitcase. You know, like last time I had something like ten bottles of Edaman, uh in my suitcase plus my other supplements, so maybe like twenty bottles overall, and they didn't stop me. I'm like, okay, I can keep going. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Sometimes they kind of look at me funny when I, I put it through the conveyor belt. They're like, they, they they're like, what all of these little canisters. You know, it's, 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 I'm like, okay, I promise I, I'm just healthy. I'm just trying to stay healthy. All right. <laughs> this is not here to hurt anybody. So anyway, guys, again, thanks so much. Thank you guys for all the questions and comments. Um, if we didn't get to your question today, uh, definitely stick around. Uh, we'll be doing another one of these probably in the next few weeks, uh, maybe next month or something like that. I don't know. We'll, we'll just see we we're, we're crazy busy, but, and the holidays are coming, but uh, we'll try to do these more often again. Thanks guys so much. And